in the next subset, subsection, I want to show you the full knuth morris pratt algorithm, the essence of which you have seen previously, the, the way to construct this string matching automaton is most of what knuth morris pratt is. There's just this, this little blem blemish that you had to store the transition function, the edges for this automaton, for every possible input character, even if most of those never occurred in your pattern. And so the knuth morris pratt algorithm is a modification of that that avoids this, this overhead on, in space. And uh, the idea for that is to modify the type of automata we look at. We define a new type of transition which doesn't have an exact correspondence in the automata in the automaton world, uh, but is, is very convenient in at least in this case. So um, the third insight of those three, I don't think it was one in insight per person. I think it's a, it was basically invented independently by uh, two groups of them. Anyways, <laughs> that's the historical, the historical bit. Uh, remember how we constructed the automaton? We always kept track of this state x, where we would be if, you know, the first character wasn't there, and where we start looking if we have a mismatch. Why would we not delay this simulation of this last step until we actually need it? So in a way, already before, we just had the current state and then the state x, and that was essentially all the information. But it's not, it's not uh, at first clear how you can do this. The right notion for this is a failure link. That's a new type of, of link in the automaton, so it's an edge. But instead of uh, a, a character, it has this cross mark as, an, as, a, as a label, which says no character matched. And the way these work is if you're in a state and you see a new character for which you have an edge, you have to take that edge. If you don't have an edge for that character, you follow the failure link, but you keep the same character. So you don't declare the C done then, as normally an automaton would. You keep the same character of the text and try again. And that could mean it still doesn't work because you only have an edge for B. So you have to take another failure link and maybe another failure link. And only at this point you can consume the C because this, this loop edge allows a C. Okay? So in a way the computations are like if in a DFA. You always know exactly what to do because it's either there is an edge for your character and then you have to take it well, there's no such edge, then you have to take the failure link. No, no random guessing, no, no Schrodinger's whatever, you're not in several states. Um, but at the same time, it's also not quite like a DFA. It's a little different. Here's our running example, this time with failure links instead of the, the tons of edges for all characters. Uh, I think you can already visually see that you need fewer edges. And here the alphabet was just three characters. Um, let me run through the example briefly. Uh, you start in state zero. Now I read an A. Sorry, I should have said I start in state zero over to the left. Now I read an A and after that I'm in state one. I read a B, I'm in state two. I read an A, I'm in state three. So far so good. And another B that brings me to state four and an A, and I'm in, happy in state 5. But now uh, I read a B instead of the C, so I can't take the next edge, so instead I have to go back to 3. The important bit is I'm not consuming the B yet. I'm only consuming the B when I here can finally take the transition that has a B. That's the important distinction. Uh, I'm in state 4, read an A, brings me to state 5. I'm in state 5, I cannot read an A, the next character, so what I have to do is follow a failure link. Brings me to state 3. Now in state 3 I can still not read an A, so I have to go another failure link back to 1. And uh, still no luck, so I have to go back to 0. And then I can read an A that brings me back to state 1. 
Sometimes these uh, can cascade a bit. From state one, I can read a B and go to state two. I can read an A, go to state three, read a B, go to state four. But we haven't passed through state seven, so no match in this case. It's a different text. Uh, here's the same thing in nice. Um, and that's, that's the part I showed. Uh, here's the, the pattern, how it is aligned with the text. Uh, let's have a quick wake, uh, wake up. I think this needs careful reading. What's the worst case time to process one character in such an automaton as I've just shown you? At least 50 before for the other questions. I'll leave you a little bit of space, a little bit of time. <clears throat> Three more. Two more. One more. Ah. There we go. Okay. So we have a clear winner in terms of popular vote and a few other answers, but uh, that's the right one. Uh, so why is that the case? So first of all, why is it not constant? It would have been nice, like in a DFA, to have constant time for each character. Uh, in a way, that's true, but only in an amortized way. Remember that haunts us again from the resizing arrays. Well, we'll come to that uh, next week. Uh, I want to show that this, this can actually happen. The way that it's... Uh, why can it not be worse than M? Well, uh, processing a character stops as soon as you take an edge that consumes that character. So you can only have more effort if you have to follow failure links. Because that's the, on the only two things that this automaton can do. One stops the processing and the other keeps going. So we have to have more keep goings uh, for this to be more expensive. But a, a failure link always brings us further to the right, in, uh, in, to the left in the picture. Uh, they always lead to a state with a smaller index because they correspond to shifting the pattern further. So you cannot have more than M failure links. Uh, but you, you could have M if you have a, a degenerate pattern like this with all A's. So here, uh, if, if you work out the failure links, they always just go one hop back. Uh, intuitively, because uh, every position could be a match uh, there's nothing in, in the pattern. It's so self-symmetric, self-similar. It doesn't block any of the occurrences. Okay, so that sounds bad, but uh, we'll see that this is not such a big problem. I want to briefly show the, the code for the algorithm, and then the analysis will probably have to wait till next week. The knuth Morris pratt algorithm is pretty much just explained, uh, just translated the idea I explained on the automaton to code to convince you that it's, uh, it's easy to write this down in, in a way that's also efficient on computers to execute. 
and to make it make it a bit more concrete and precise. There's one function that we'll get to next week, which is computing these failure links. One obvious thing um, about, the, uh, about the automaton that I haven't stated, it doesn't need a transition function for every state and every character. It just needs one failure link for each state. We don't even need these other things because it's implicit in the pattern. I know what the label of each of these edges is. It's just the corresponding uh, character of the pattern. So all I need to store about this automaton is the failure links. So there's a function to compute those. Let's ignore it for now. And then we have an array of the failure links, which is just the target of these, target of these arrows for a state Q. Fail Q is the target of the failure link. Then we start with position 0 in the text. That's our first guess. And we start with state 0 in the automaton. That's our starting state. As long as we haven't read the entire text, we check if we can follow the match edge, which is, is the current position in the text matching the next in the pattern. If that's the case, we follow the match edge, which means we move i one step further, so we go to the next position in the text, and we also increment the state in the automaton. That's the easy case. If we reach that way, the accepting state, we can return the occurrence that we found. And again, i is the position in the text that we compare, so you have to go back q steps to get the, uh, the return value is supposed to be the starting position of the pattern in the text, so uh, hence the i minus q. Now the interesting thing is the failure link, if the next character does not match. So uh, in this case, there's two, two options. If you're in a normal state, not the state zero, then you have to follow a failure link. So we check, um, we, we take one failure link and then check again. And this checking again is just doing the, the while loop iteration one more time. All right, so if we couldn't match a character, we do one failure link and then we go back and try again. And this automatically does the right thing. If we're in state zero, then there is no legal failure link. So for state zero, we just always go to the next position in the character, uh, the next character in the text. In in the pictures, I wrote this like like this. Uh, so whenever you have a, a character that's not the match one, you just consume it at this point because you have to eventually get rid of those that don't occur. So it's it's clear that there's um a special case needed for this state zero. Um, and that's it, not too, not too convoluted code, I think. Um, and we only have this, this one array.